Hello. <clears throat> Hope everyone is all right. So here is the here is our second video about making a notch top, but now with the neck plane like a Les Paul guitar. You know, neck plane, pickup plane, all that stuff. Um, I will not go back to what I did previously. So if you want to know how oh, I made this. Um, really important shape there uh, just watch my previous video um, now we will focus on the center line and the neck plane uh, i have two methods to do this um, uh, no one of the uh, two methods are perfect but honestly I uh, tested the two in a real uh, world with my CNC and the two were really satisfying. Um, just for you to remember, I work with laminated, laminated top <laughs> for my guitar and um, I have not much room for error and uh, the two method gave me uh, really good results. So let's start right now. So I will remove my control. I did <coughs> as I want to work with the surface. Um, let's make our center line and our center profile right now. So on this uh, <coughs> plane, uh, just for you to remember, always work from the origin easier. So let's do. So our neck plane is a line. So. I make a line that is um, let's go on the right. I will remove this. Okay. Um, for me, it's 90 90 millimeters long. The neck plane. I discovered over the years that with 19 millimeters long. I'm all right for all the um, scale length I use from 24 inch to 28 inch inches, um, for baritone guitar. Uh, 90 uh, millimeters works great for all those scale. It's perfect. So uh, it's one of the the size I never change in in five years. In fact, <laughs> so. Um, I keep with the 90 millimeters, but maybe for you it would be other. Okay. Um, uh, we will do a guitar with a five degree angles. So here is our next shape. Uh, my guitar have a 4.5 degree, but for this one I want to make a, to make it five degree. Um, then. We have our pickup planes. Let's say you go something over there and we go back to here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I like to have my distance there, so let's make it. Um, 14 millimeters <clears throat> and from there to there I want it to be on my guitar it's um, it's 165 millimeters uh, oh sorry it's not this one it's not this distance It's the distance between this point and the end of the neck plane on my guitar it's 165 millimeters but it can vary i like my uh, <clears throat> my bridge to be on the higher spot of the but you know with the scale length it changed a little bit so let's make a I find that it works right between 200 millimeters and 165 millimeters, but let's make it uh, just right, maybe in the middle. 180. Okay. 
then I want this to be horizontal and this one to be horizontal and I want this one to be <coughs> tangent to my neck plane so the curve will be smoother and uh, the final result too so <coughs> now another thing I already hear some people say, well, but where is your neck plane? For me, for my guitar, it's I like to have the most curve, okay? I don't want to have uh, any flat spot unless the neck plane. So I kept for this the curve. It's just that I take the handle and you see, I bring it almost there. So if now, if I draw a, a, a line from this point to this point, it's almost, you know, uh, all reason uh, straight. <clears throat> so, here is our simple shape. Um, if you want to have this shape more, you know, rounded, what I did is I add a line there, you know, 20 millimeters line and then go from there to there or you can use arc I um, suggest you watch the Austin channel video they are great and really interesting and um, it really teach you how to apply the constraint and uh, to work with arc but for the purpose of this video I use the spline because it's you know really simple <coughs> so here is our profile Our side profile, our neck plane, our pickup plane, and here is our shape for our curve. So finish sketch. Let's go over there. Okay. <coughs> so now we have different stuff to do. <coughs> we can start by making this one into a surface it's exactly the same as the previous video so we're gonna extrude this 10 millimeters the size doesn't doesn't matter here um, and <clears throat> what we have to do is to make some okay there is two methods there i will start with my first method where we will make the neck plane and then after we will see another one much simpler that I think works even maybe better uh, unless you really want it to be uh, with the other methods there is a 0 0.2 millimeters uh, error if I can say <laughs> but we'll see so this is the first method <clears throat> um, Let's start by making all our planes at uh, strategic points. So I bring back my control. I want to make a plane that will go, that will cut the, my curve here, 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 and here, and also at my highest point. Okay, so let's start from the first, inspect. Okay, here's the distance. First, make this one. So, align. Go 
want this line to be in the same length. we have to draw the intersect points okay okay here we want this to be horizontal and we want this to be tangent to this okay first method we'll extrude this plane there very simple no, no. this line oh. I have to take the sketches from this just like this so line this way or you can just say two objects okay let's reverse it so, so we have we are we got on neck plane or half neck plane <clears throat> um, the only difference with this method you can make the neck plane using this plane making a line that goes from there to there but honestly i found it easier to do it like this it's quick easy and simple and this point is at zero zero so it's all right um, so <clears throat> let me show you we have to extrude The first part there and then we patch this if not this we have to cut this part with this plane if I don't cut this um, this surface uh, version 360 wants to make the love from you see all the complete but it will not work as we have um, I can try and you'll see if I do laugh from let's say this to this and to this and you see it's not working <laughs> obviously there is too much edge and okay so what we want to do is to just cut this surface split face using this plane and now we're gonna be able to loft this first part so it's the same as the last time we want the profile 2 to be tangent but but here I don't use the tangent for this profile why because when you get there at this part the neck plane is not tangent to this other surface because it's it is an at an angle five degree here so there is no tangency so if you ask version 360 to love this surface tangent you will end up with some small ridges and uh, believe me you will not maybe not see them in the software but on the wood you'll see them 
and uh, I had to restart uh, a mold from zero and it's very long and frustrating so don't make this mistake so just use the rail over there and this part okay so now we are on nice surface that go from there to there okay I didn't do the flatter surface there I can do it let's do it just right now because it's fun to be able to shape it faster after <laughs> so let's create our usual intersection okay and our spline okay let's make it horizontal and let's make it Just flatter like this, 10 millimeters more. Okay, you see it's interesting there. <clears throat> and sure, I can do this one, but with this method, it's you don't need, in fact, this this parts. I will do I will do it, but. Okay. There's a tall this this. Okay. I could add one if I want to the highest point, but with this I'm alright for now. I also oh yeah because that's why I want to say I also uh, uh, I don't remember the word English but I, s I saw that uh, it's smoother when you use the furthest or the inner point of the curve this one is not the further point okay uh, we don't have choice because our neck plane is 90 millimeters but if I was not using a neck plane I would use uh, a curve over there because that go for the furthest point. I, I just saw that the curve are more smoother when you do this. Let's do another one here. So intersection with this and this. So we have. Or curl if I if we will if we want to use it for our second method we'll see okay and again let's constrain oh this one I will use a tangent okay okay mm this one hmm, way better <clears throat> okay here we have all our lines so let's draw let's make our surfaces now so Let's go with the first method. We loft this and this. We want this, no, not this part to be tangent, just connected. It's this part we want it to be tangent. And as a ray, we want to use this part. Okay. I can keep it like this. I will for now. Okay. So. We have our first part. Then I will stitch this one with this one. And then I 
I will make a left. Boom. Just remove our sketches that go from these surfaces to this one. Say. We want this one and this one to be tangents. So profile one is asked to be tangent. Okay. You can see I said tangent. You see I try to go tangent. So I have a gap over there. I use my rail to over constrain it. Okay. And now let's see what does it look like. If you watch it from top, as you can see, we have something not that bad. When I say not that bad, here you can see there is a kind of continuity, but When I did it this way, it was perfect on the CNC, honestly. I like also to just compare it with the ISO curves. That's not too bad. Okay, let's not that for the the, the, um, we really want this part and this part to be tangent, but um, I think I forget something when I did it. When you use a surface for a ray, you can choose the tangency, and we want this to be tangent to this. Oh, and it's not working. Because when I did it, I change. I go from there to there, if I remember well. Yes, that's it. We want to love from this part to this part. You have to press the plus button because it's the same surface. And we want to use this as a ray. So now these two profiles, this one is tangent and this one too. And this one, the ray one, is connected. Remember, you don't want it to be tangent as it's an angle. Okay, let's check it. And if I remember why, well, it's way better like this. Yes. Okay. We still have this kind of uncontinuity, but if we apply, let's stitch it. And if we apply an appearance, yeah, you see, it's it's beautiful there. Check it. All right, I like it. And you can see we have kind of pla of, of a plane over there. And I find it a little bit. I wish it's more flatter there, so I can just change my first love edit feature and just add another rail. This one. Okay, and as you can see, it changes. Let's watch it like this. Yeah, very smooth, nice transition over there. Neck plane, pickup plane there. You're good to go. We could have this one there, 
edit feature okay so you get the ID I think this method works well I didn't use this one because I was lofting from there to there I could have used it but it was more interesting with this <clears throat> and honestly in that part it's not that important for now that's for the first method I will show you my second one I used so for this I will just hide our body we just created for the second method I will use you will see it's really simple <laughs> honestly we will loft this surface exactly as in my first video to this surface over there we want this profile too to be tangent okay then as a rail we want to use this one that one that one and that one okay let's reverse it okay let's remove our sketches and let's compare it with our previous one as you can see there is not too much difference you can see a small difference over there But honestly, it's, you see the line from my second shade, it's like it's kind of on the top here and under in this part, but it's like maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters. I would say it's negligible. And what I like with this really simple method, you, can, you have a this kind of smoother surface but still you will see that ridge over there <laughs> you can even see another one here I'm always torn between the two If you watch it with the ISO curves, see, it's really smooth. I like it. Sure, we have a, a part that is really flat over there, so having oh yeah, you see, we use two rail just try to remove one if we remove maybe this one the ray two just see if it's smoother or oh, no we lose the flat part there we lost it. Now we have this kind of weird ridges there. I don't like it. <laughs> and if we remove this one, but keep this one. Hmm. 
better one. Let's compare with our first one. Hmm, almost the same. There is not that much difference. So it's up to you if you prefer the second method of the first one. Honestly, I can I can decide myself. Uh, I would say this one is really smooth and I'm sure this part is really really 100% flat. But what I like in this one it's really the continuity of everything as a whole, you know. It's only one piece and when I put my neck over there I, I have always to to send a little so I think that's not really an issue over there. Um, one thing I like to do also we okay, first body and let's mirror it right now the plane okay and let's stitch it nice one You see from the top, we can see our flat area over there. That is not 100% flat, but I don't want it to be 100% flat. <laughs> mm, I like it, really. I really like this one. We could try to, if you use our elbow body, uh, let's just extrude this part minus 38 millimeters and just patch the bottom. Oh. Okay, and let's stitch all together. If we did a good job, it will transform these three surfaces into a solid. Yes, you see now we have a solid. <laughs> and let's do this with the other one to see if it works. It's funny because on this one you can see the ridge is more pronounced over there, but it would be probably all right. And if we play with the the rail, we probably could have something smoother. But I think it's all right. So are we able to make? The solid, why I say minus, okay, patch, and let's stitch together. Okay, it's work. So you see they're really, really close together. As you can see, it's really close. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope it could help some of you 
to make those uh, less full uh, top plates. <clears throat> I use the same concept for my arch top, so because I like when the the fretboard ends up flat on the on the top plate, and um, and my uh, electric guitar are not uh, full body; they are hollow body, and I the side and the back are made like uh, acoustic guitar the top is laminated i like it no waste of wood so hope you enjoyed it uh, next time i will show you how i deal with the colorway it's really complicated because um, if you cut the cutaway part on the lace pole you know that the binding is like really high and on this place uh, if you are making solid body it's not a big deal but when you make hollow body like me it's sometimes a big deal and I have to make some bevel over there so again I tried I didn't figure it figure it out how to make the cutaway part you know with the arm being um, arch also um, so for now I have to make a bevel and uh, like the arm bubble on the acoustic and I find it really tedious so um, I have to find a way to make uh, um, a better uh, arm but it will be for an another video so don't hesitate to ask me some questions and uh, to comment under the video or on the Facebook page so goodbye thanks for watching